first thing is that with this protest coming to town and the convoy uh, arriving in Ottawa, the protesters, one of their big asks is for the federal government to end the vaccine mandates, uh, you know, not just for truckers, it goes beyond that. But nonetheless, in your file, the trucking mandate uh, really did start and spark uh, what we've seen with this convoy. So is there any wiggle room from the federal government? Will you be changing federal policy or federal vaccine mandates for truckers as a result of this convoy? Cormac, it's important for me to start by saying that uh, almost 90% of truckers are fully vaccinated and they're doing their job as you and I are talking. They're crossing the border. They're delivering goods for Canadians to the grocery stores, to other retailers and distribution centers. And it's also important to note that the Canadian trucking alliances and other association, trucking associations have distanced themselves uh, uh, from this protest. Um, having said that, the uh, and there's always room for a debate about uh, about uh, the role of vaccination, but we are following the advice of public health, where it says vaccination is our best way out of this pandemic, and the more and the higher percentage of our vaccination, the lower hospitalization rate, the lower infection, the lower the absenteeism will be, and the more resilience we add to our supply chain. Last fall, we mandated it to the entire transportation sector. However, we exempted truckers given the uh, we wanted to give them more time. But last fall, the air, the rail, the marine sectors have all been vaccinated and they're up to 99% of vaccination rate. Uh, we waited until we felt Truckers have had enough critical mass uh, to uh, to require this mandate, but also we coordinated it. So now it's coordinated with the states. The United States has a mandate at the border. So whether, by the way, we have a mandate at our own border or not, Canadian truckers who want to cross the borders are required to be fully vaccinated by the U.S. mandate. All that to say is that there's a logic uh, to what we're doing. We want to end the mandate, uh, the, the 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 pandemic. We want to uh, protect our supply chain, and the sooner we get. Uh, uh, to fully vaccinated uh, travelers, the sooner we can end the pandemic and preserve our economy. And so you're not planning on making any changes to your policies around vaccine uh, You know, we'll always listen to public health advice. These measures, by the way, are all, let me be very clear, they're temporary. As soon as we end the pandemic, those measures will be adjusted uh, and lifted. So it's it's important to note that it's also important that even if we lift the mandate, there's a mandate on the U.S. border. Uh, but let me close by saying we'll always listen to our public health advice. And when the time is right, we will lift these mandates. But for now, it is important for the health and safety of Canadians, but also for the protection of our economy. Why is a vaccine mandate necessary when truckers you know, are largely in cabs on their own, not interacting with many people as they crisscross the continent to try and deliver goods for our supply chain? Uh, couldn't there have been an alternative with maybe testing or uh, better screening and rules around that as opposed to the vaccine mandate? It boils down to this, uh, Cormac. If you believe that vaccines are effective, our best tool uh, to protect uh, workers, to protect our economy, then um, it makes sense that we need all workers who work in essential services, including trucking, to be fully vaccinated because it will add resilience to our supply chains. It will protect our uh, truckers. We're already having a dealing with a shortage with truckers and we want to protect the ones who are working. So if it reduces absenteeism, if it reduces hospitalization rate, if it, in it reduces infection rate, it makes sense uh, that we require truckers to be fully vaccinated. I do understand the delicate nature of their job and uh, that's why we delayed it. We delayed it a lot more than any other sector, but we feel that this was the right time. And again, the US has a mandate too. So it, it just makes a lot of sense. With the protests that's arriving in Ottawa, are you concerned that this protest could turn violent or there could be security concerns as a result of it? Uh, look, I'm hopeful that this protest, um, uh, by the way, Protests are an essential element of democracy, and and there's always room for debate and disagreements on policies. I am 
hopeful that this protest uh, do it the way we do things in Canada, peacefully and respectfully. Um, I know our law enforcement agencies are doing the assessment and they're doing the preparation, so I'll leave that judgment to them. But I'm really hopeful and I'm calling on all protesters uh, to ensure that, you know, they protest in peace and respect. Uh, but, you know, there are elements, uh, supporters, people within the convoy who have been talking about this like a war, like a battle. Some have made reference to the storming of Capitol Hill in Washington, saying this should be Canada's January 6th style event. Does that concern you when you hear that kind of rhetoric coming out of people who are supporting the convoy or even a part of the convoy? I mean, one person who's a part of the convoy said um, before it started that uh, the only way to end this is with bullets. Of course, that concerns me. I know most Canadians are alarmed by this type of rhetoric, uh, and it's unacceptable. Um, so, um, I, as I said, I will uh, defer the uh, the security judgment and operations to our law enforcement agencies. There, uh, they I have confidence in them. They'll do the, the job that they're expected to do. Um, uh, but undoubtedly, um, some of the voices that are coming out of that protest are concerning. They're ex they're extreme uh, points of view, and they're offside with uh, most Canadians. Let's talk about your personal security because an email went out. Uh, I was able to obtain, as other outlets did, an email that was sent out to all MPs from the Sergeant at Arms, warning about doxing, uh, where the home addresses of MPs may have potentially been sent out online to others. Uh, so that, you know, demonstrators could see where you live as an MP. Um, you know, what's your reaction to the attempted doxing uh, that's going on at the moment ahead of this protest? Uh, are you concerned for your own personal safety um, as a result of that? And, uh, you know, is this crossing the line? Uh, Cormac, I have a duty to Canadians. Our government has a duty to Canadians. Um, we have to do the right thing to protect Canadians and to protect jobs and to protect our economy. And we will, we will not apologize. I will not apologize. And I will not be intimidated uh, uh, by uh, you know, a small number of extremist voices. Um, I'm not worried. Um, I have confidence, as I said, in our law enforcement agencies to do the right thing. Uh, but I have a duty to Canadians and I will continue as long as I have this job, I'll continue to do uh, whatever is expected of me by Canadians to protect their health and safety and to protect our economy. Your government, the prime minister has called this a fringe minority and uh, said their views are unacceptable, something that you've uh, sort of uh, echoed in your comments already with this. Uh, Aaron O'Toole, the Conservative leader, is going to be meeting with the truckers. Given the rhetoric that we've heard from some, uh, you know, not everybody in this convoy, uh, just, you know, to be clear, not everybody is expressing these views that you say are unacceptable and, and, and extreme. Uh, but Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole is going to be sitting down with the truckers to meet with them. He says he wants to hear their concerns. And this convoy is a reflection of the frustration and fatigue people are facing. Uh, what message do you think it says that the, the leader of the opposition is meeting with these truckers? Cormac, let me be very clear. Um, the idea of uh, frustration uh, with COVID and public health measures is, uh, is uh, I think most Canadians are sympathetic with, including myself. We're all frustrated. Uh, we're all hoping to end COVID as quickly as possible. And that's precisely why we have these mandates and these public health measures. But when you uh, talk about these additional uh, views that are alarming, I think most Canadians are offside. So while there's sympathy to some of the frustration, uh, there is a lack of patience for those who want to uh, dismantle uh, all the smart public health policies that we uh, that we are dealing with today to protect uh, lives. I think Aaron O'Toole is trying to have it both ways, and it's a, it shows a lack of leadership. It shows a lack of resolve. Yes, we can have a debate on policies, on measures. Uh, we can disagree on things, but to appear like you're endorsing uh, extremists' point of views that are promoting hate or violence is really irresponsible and reckless. And I think Aaron O'Toole is being irresponsible by trying to have it both ways. It's lack of leadership and it's lack of resolve to how to deal with this pandemic. Will you meet with any of the organizers of this protest to hear their concerns and speak to them and, and express your points of view? 
Cormac, I'll always uh, hear uh, from people. I have uh, myself and my team have been meeting with different trucking associations and representatives of the industry, of retailers, of grocers, of shippers. And I will continue to do so on Monday, by the way, precisely on Monday. We are hosting a, a supply chain summit I'm convening that brings representatives from the industry, including truckers. So that is part of my job. I will continue to do this. Uh, uh, and it is really my job, but it's also my job to call out uh, irrational uh, extremist point of view that are offsite with what Canadians want and what Canadians deserve. So you have no plans to meet with the, uh, with the organizers of this protest? Uh, as I said, I will always meet with people who have reasonable demands, but I will not lend support to uh, outlandish extremists' point of view. And in fact, I think it's my duty to call it out. Okay, so just to clarify again, because uh, there, there's no direct answer, there are no plans at this time for you to meet with the organizers, correct? Uh, I, you're asking me the same question again, Cormac, and I'm giving you uh, an answer. I'm saying I will not uh, give credence to extremist point of view or legitimize people who are calling for violence or uh, or, or hate. Uh, but I will always meet with people, including those who have uh, a respectful points of view that disagree with mine. And I will always be humbled by the experience of truckers and others who really want to do the right thing for Canadians. And then finally, um, you know, whether you agree with their points of view or not, it's clear that this convoy has shown there is anger, there is frustration, um, and, and people are coming to Ottawa to vent that. How they do it, we'll have to see over the weekend. Um, but nonetheless, moving forward, there is this underlying anger and frustration within Canadian society. It may just be 10% of the society, but nonetheless, that is 10% of Canadians who are feeling very angry. How do you as a government try to bring the temperature down, try to address these issues without um, only fueling that anger. Yeah, look, Cormac, I agree. Uh, there is a sense of frustration, uh, I think way beyond 10%. In fact, I, I and many of our colleagues share uh, uh, that sense of frustration. Uh, this pandemic is still not over. Um, so there is a legitimate uh, a point of view out there that people are frustrated. I think the issue where uh, we people diverge is how to, what to do about it. Uh, I think most Canadians, while frustrated, they understand that governments and public health experts are trying to do their best to manage COVID because COVID is not going to end itself. COVID is not going to manage itself. COVID needs to be confronted and uh, we need to use the best tools possible based on science and public health advice to confront it and to end it as quickly as possible. So I think most Canadians, while frustrated, understand that we need to do things even if we don't like some of these measures. Uh, uh, having said that, uh, we need to also, as uh, political leaders, manage, like you said, the temperature. We need to be uh, respectful of uh, points of view uh, that disagree with us, but we also need to draw a line uh, uh, where people are promoting violence and hate. I think Canadians will, uh, will not tolerate that. Canadians have sacrificed so much, and I don't think they have much patience for people who are promoting violence or hate or dismantlement of our uh, public health uh, system, the way we are protecting people. So I don't think Canadians agree with that. It's offside uh, what uh, our duty as a government. And we will continue, uh, as I said, to consult experts, but also uh, to do whatever we can. And that's the final reminder. We will have Canadians back. And that's how we reassure Canadians, by providing them data, by providing them information, and by providing them support. And if you look at the data, Canada today has one of the lowest death rate in the G7, one of the lowest infection rates in the G7. We've restored more, more than the jobs we've lost since the beginning of the pandemic. Our economy is doing well. We have still other challenges, undoubtedly, and it's frustrating. But we need to continue have Canadians back, and we need to be responsive to Canadians' needs and support our economy. Minister, we're well over the agreed upon time for the interview, so I want to thank you for, for going over time with me here and addressing these concerns. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Cormac.